Okay, so today we're gonna to look at cleaning out your caches. This should free you up a bit of space in Windows and also possibly even speed up your system. So why not stick around? All the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say today, we're gonna to look at cleaning out your caches in Windows. This is gonna show you how to do it in Windows 11, but to some degree, this will apply to Windows 10 too. Now, what are caches? Are they important? Well, caches are designed really to try and speed up your computer and your browsing, etc. But over time, they take up a lot of space on your computer and can end up doing the complete opposite. When your cache grows to such a big size, it can actually slow your system down. Now, there are several different caches on your system for several different things. You may have caches in your emails, in your web browser, also on your system itself. And as I say, they are really designed to speed your system up. But as your cache grows, it takes longer for your computer to find that file to speed up the system. So it can in actual fact end up, once, once it grows to such a big size, it can end up slowing things down because it takes too much time to go through all the information on your system to find the cache file that it's looking for. So let's have a look. So first of all, what we need to do is click on our start button and then on our keyboard, type the word disk clean. And hopefully after a few seconds under best match, you should see disk clean up. Move your mouse over it, left click once. Okay, and then you should get this come up here. Now, what I would suggest is, is make sure that temporary internet files is ticked. And then obviously like mine here, I've got recycle bin there. Now I've got 33 gigabytes of stuff in my recycle bin. So let's tick that. Although it's not a cache, um, it is taking up space. And we've also got here temporary files. That's taking up a bit of space. And we've got thumbnails as well. Now this is gonna rebuild our thumbnails once we delete this. We shouldn't notice any difference, but it might end up speeding up the time it takes for little thumbnails to be generated like in pictures. So, okay, once you've done that, click on OK. And then it says, are you sure you want to permanently delete these files? Click on delete files. Now this bit might take a bit of time. It really depends on how much there is to clean up on your system. Just leave it, let it do its stuff and wait for this box, this disk cleanup box to disappear. Once it disappears, it means it's cleaned up that part of your system. But don't go anywhere just yet because we're gonna do a few more cleans. Now, sometimes in Windows 10 and 11, it, this does have a tendency at times for the box to stay on the screen. Just move the mouse and the box may well disappear. If it does, that's fine. So the next thing we wanna do is click on the start button again and again, type disk space clean and then click on disk cleanup under best match. And then this time what we wanna do is we wanna click here where it says clean up system files. So again, this is gonna search through the system and see what it needs to clean up. What we can do here is we can tick a few more boxes. So we can tick Windows upgrade log files. So if you've not got any problems with Windows update, if it's all up to date, then click on that. That's gonna free up quite a bit of space. Temporary internet files again, Leave that uh, ticked. If it's not ticked, tick it. Uh, system error and mini dump files. If you've not had any problems with your system, then tick that. Windows error reports and feedback. Tick that, and again, if you've not had any problems with your system. The DirectX shader cache, tick that. Device driver packages, you can tick that. Delivery optimization files, tick that as well. Language resource files, tick that. Again, if there's anything in the recycle bin, tick that. Tick temporary files and tick thumbnails and then click on OK. And then click on delete files and there we go. It's now going through. And again, this could take some time 
If it seems to stick on anything, then just leave it for a few minutes and then just try just giving the mouse a little bit of a wiggle. So there you go. As you can see, my green bar is going up the screen now. It's cleaning up the Windows upgrade log files. Hopefully shouldn't take too long. And there you go. Just wiggled the mouse. And there you go, that box has disappeared. I don't know why it does that, but it does. So the next thing we want to do is we want to hold down our Windows key on the keyboard. That key is usually on a laptop between the FN and ALT key on the bottom row of keys on the keyboard. Or if you've got a desktop PC, then it's the Control or CTRL key and ALT key. Again, on the bottom row of keys on the keyboard, hold that down and tap the letter R, R for Romeo. Then let go of the Windows key once this run box comes up. Delete anything that's in the open part of the run box. As you can see, I've got Reg Edit in mine. So delete that out and type in there prefetch. That's P-R-E-F-E-T-C-H. Then press enter or return on your keyboard. Now, it will probably say you don't currently have permission to access this folder. Click continue to permanently get access to this folder. So move your mouse over continue, left click once. Now in here, there are a lot of files and these are basically files that I've loaded up in the past. And what it's doing is it's telling your Windows system how to load these files up so that the programs or apps load quicker. Now there's a lot of programs in here that I know I haven't used for a long time. Some of them are not even installed on the system. So they're taking up space. As you can see here in the bottom left of this window, I've got 513 items. Now I don't regularly use 513 programs or apps on my system. So rather than sit here and go through the list, what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna delete everything that's in there. Now, it, that's fine. If you do still use any of these programs, the next time you start them for the very first time, they may take a little longer to start up, but it will rebuild the cache over time. So it will take a little bit longer the first time, but then after that, it'll just be as quick as normal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold down the CTRL key. That's the key in the bottom left-hand corner of your keyboard, also known as the control key, and tap the letter A, A for alpha. And once you've tapped the letter A, let go of the CTRL key. Everything should be highlighted now. Then just simply press the delete key on your keyboard. And there we go, it's now recycling. There might be some things it might say, it can't be completed, but don't worry, just skip those files. Those are open at the moment on the system. So leave that well alone, just, just skip it. Okay, so as you can see there, that has cleaned out the prefetch file. I've only got three items in there now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reboot the computer. Let's restart it. And I'm gonna pause this while it's restarting. Right, so my computer's restarted. Let's just open up an app that I use quite often. Let's just open up Chrome. As you can see, it still loads up pretty quick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close it down and let's just go back into prefetch. So I'm gonna hold down the Windows key, tap the letter R, let go of the Windows key, press enter or return on my keyboard, click continue. And as you should see here, there you go. Some of the files have already recreated, in particular, the files for Chrome. But there was a lot of old files in there that I just, I haven't used. I haven't used in ages. I noticed there was a few things in there that I, well, that I just, I haven't used in years. So there was no point in having them in there. And that's cleaned up a little bit of space for me. So what's the next thing to do? So let's just open one of our browsers, first of all. So I'm gonna open Chrome. That's the one I use the most on here. I'm gonna click on the three dots in the top right-hand corner. Gonna go down and go down to settings, click on that. And then in search settings, I'm gonna type the word cache. That's C-A-C-H-E, C-A-C-H-E. And then click on clear browsing data. And then what we wanna do is we want to untick everything apart from cached images and files. And the time range, we wanna change that to all time. If we want to, we can click on advanced and again, 
untick everything but i think every i think the cache is in uh, the basic section so that's fine but if you want to go into advanced then what you can do is you can untick everything in there apart from cache and then click clear data but i'm going to stick in basic just make sure that cache images and files are selected make sure the time range says all time and then click clear data now what this generally means is the cache for browsers is it's storing up things like pictures so it doesn't have to go out to the internet again to get them certain bits of information it keeps a copy on your computer again so it doesn't have to go out to the internet this was great in the days when internet was slow but nowadays internet connections generally seem to be so fast and again if your cache becomes too big it's going to spend more time searching through your computer for the images and the files than what it would do to go out to the internet to get them so what if you're you're not using Google Chrome what if you're using Edge let's go into Edge shall we and again three dots in the top right hand corner go down to settings and let's click in search settings and type in there cache and there we go so it says here clear browsing data now click on choose what to clear just to the right of it and make sure the time range is set to all time untick everything apart from cached images and files you might need to scroll down a little bit to untick a few more bits so let's just do that i'm going to untick all of these i mean you can leave all data from previous version of microsoft edge leave that tick if you want and then just click clear now at the bottom and there you go that's cleared it out. Now, it might take a little bit longer depending on how much you've got to clear out. So let's just close this down here. What if you use Firefox? So let's just go into Firefox. And what we want to do is once it loads up is click on the three horizontal lines in the top right hand corner. Go down to settings and in finding settings up the top there, just type in cache again. And there we go. We've got here calculating site data and cache. So let's just click clear data there. And we want to untick cookies and site data. And we want to leave cached web content selected. Click on clear. And there you go. That should now clear out that too. So let's just close this down. I'm just going to click on the tabs up the top there to close all of it down. What if you use Thunderbird as your email client? That's got a cache in it as well. So let's just load up Thunderbird. OK, so once that's opened, then go to the three horizontal lines up there and then go click on them. Go down to settings, click on that. And again, in finding settings type cache. And there we go. It says disk space your cache is currently using. Now, mine isn't using a lot, but I've seen some of them to grow over one gigabytes or two gigabytes. So just going to click clear now there. And that's cleared out the cache for Thunderbird 2. So let's just close down Thunderbird. So there you go. Unfortunately, I don't think Outlook or... Uh, any of the other email clients have a clearable cache from their menus, but um, have a look if you, you do use something like EM Client or Outlook, have a look online to see if you can find any ways of clearing those out. I don't know offhand, but if you use a different browser, then try using the same tactics as I've used there. Click on settings and then if you've got a search box, search for cache and see if you've got the option there to clear out the cache. Hopefully that should have cleared out a bit of space for you. Hopefully speeded up your system. Let us know in the comments down below how you got on with following this guide. I hope you like this video and I hope it helped. If it did, consider hitting thanks and making a donation to this channel or have a look in the description down below if you want to have a look through my Amazon store or you want a new VPN or you're looking for a Fire Stick, Fire TV Cube or Fire Stick accessories, we've got some great links down there just for you. Buying, subscribing and donating really does help support this channel. It helps me to be able to dedicate 
more time to spend researching and bringing you these great videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money. And whilst you're here, if you see something you think your friends, your family, or your work colleagues might be interested in, then please don't forget to share these videos on your social media timelines. If you want to look me up on X, formerly known as Twitter, then I'm at CWTEK. Or if you want to have a look at my website, then it's CWTEK.co.uk. Thanks for watching and speak to you again soon.